Hey guys, what's up? Aru. Now this video isn't going to be structured in any way or be too in-depth in terms of info and theory and whatnot. This 3.2 is basically just a week away. So I'm just gonna put down bits of info that I find interesting based on the latest 3.2 trailer. As well as adding my own thoughts on what might happen later down the line. Mainly this video is gonna go over the Grand Sage Azar and his possible motive behind creating a god using human wisdom, the possible inspirations from real life that it might have been taken from, as well as other characters within the game that might manifest the ideals of said people in real life. Celestia's law or rule regarding what is and isn't allowed in Teyvat, and a little speculation regarding the truths of the world and what it would mean for the rest of the story, as well as who else might know these truths. And finally, the possible implications there would be for knowing such truths. As always, timestamps for each rough theory will be down in the comments and the description. So let's get started. First, let's start with Azar. Now, from what we know, he is the current Grand Sage of Sumeru. Honestly, I think Azar is the first sage because, look at that, his motive to create a fake god or a god from his own vision can be taken from the Islamic book Quran. Okay, before I tell you about Azar, Ibrahim, and the fake gods or idols that Azar creates, bear in mind I know precious little of how it completely or specifically went. I am simply curious that they have some sort of semblance in name and relative narration to how Genshin's story is going right now. And these semblances may be the basis for how 3.2 might end up. So please, if I have any errors at all, do tell me in the comments because I am not versed in such fields and would like to know you guys' opinion on how it actually went or how it would go within Genshin. Okay? Are we good? Alright, I'll start. First, let's talk about the prophet Abraham or Ibrahim. The Ibrahim of which was tested by God and was believed to have fulfilled all the commandments that God gave him. Also known to be called Kalilula or friend of God and played a crucial role in cleansing the world of idolatry. Now what are idols, idolaters, and what is idolatry? Well if you've heard it before then you might say idolatry is the worship of an idol or the worship of someone or something other than the one and only God. And you're basically right. In in short, idolatry is the worship of false gods, and looking at it from Genshin's perspective is basically what the academia or at least what the Grand Sage Azar seems to be doing. From here, we can now go and move on to Azar himself, who was an idol sculptor and from what I can tell was also an idolater. Quick summary, Azar and Abraham were always against each other because Abraham believed that the sculptures that Azar created did not possess what the one and only God did. Abraham's strong belief in the one God and Azar's belief in his idols was what sparked each other's debate. Soon after, Abraham left his father's home and went to search for the truth about who God really is. Later on, God spoke to Abraham on top of a mountain while Abraham was searching for him. After what I would take as his epiphany, he was then pursued by the king of Babylon to be burned at the stake. But Abraham's faith was true and before he was to be burned alive, God ordered the flames to only burn his chains. And he left the fire as if he was walking out of a garden. The rest of the story after this event was about the king of Babylon, Nimrod, and Abraham duking it out based on their beliefs and claims about the god or gods. So, here's where we can manifest different characters from Genshin as characters from the story about Abraham I mentioned just now. But keep in mind that with Hoyo's storytelling, they might make many characters in the game manifest characteristics of one specific character or have a single character manifest the same ideals of many different other people. Do you get what I'm trying to say here? For example, Azar in Genshin could be both Azar or Nimrod the king, and Abraham's debate with Nimrod could be similar to Azar and Al Haytham in the trailer. Finally, anyone from the Traveler, Nilo, Haytham himself, and even Nahida could be manifested as Abraham, his son, or even God himself. But it'll be up to interpretation and opinion from there. Now, if you're asking what I think happens based on the trailer, I think that Azar is manifesting Azar himself as well as Nimrod the king. Nilo, on the other hand, possibly being Abraham because of her utmost belief in the lesser Lord Kusanali. Hence this scene and Nilo going to the academia and possibly meeting Azar, which mirrors Nimrod pursuing Abraham. And regarding the 
bit about sacrificing the traveler, I think it's a mix of different lines from different scenes. But sacrificing the traveler can also be taken from Abraham sacrificing his own son because God commanded it. And if Nilo is a representation of Ibrahim, then it's possible that the lines are actually connected. And maybe she finally sees Nahida in 3.2. But that would also mean that there is a connection between Azar the Grand Sage and Nilo who believes in Kusanali. Because remember, she was the dreamer way back in 3.0. And her going to the academia could mean something regarding her relations with the academia. Since we have scenes of Nahida being glimpsed upon by the guards. But this is possibly from Nahida's own story quest. Next, the burning of the urban soul as well as the truths that the Tori spoke of could be a reflection of God speaking to Ibrahim and Nahida finding out the words of Ruka Devata. Finally, the false god or idol sculptures that Azar makes is basically Skaramush himself because he is of course a puppet as well as his rebirth as the new god. Now, I won't go into too much detail here because it will of course be up to Hoyo's interpretation of the story anyway and I wouldn't want to ruin the fun of finding out what happens in 3.2. Again, this is just my perspective on what might happen in the story and I don't claim that what I said is actually going to happen. Along with the topic of gods and truths, I'm curious what sort of specific law does Celestia have for Sumeru to create a fake god as powerful as this thing, and has abilities that come from the Archon War as well, considering that Skaramush was created all the way after the Cataclysm, which was more or less way 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 before Skaramush was supposedly created by A, as well as what the Fatui has been doing, which is human experimentation, creation of ruined constructs, enhanced humans, robots, and for some reason, Celestia not batting an eye. So this law really opens up questions about what exactly Celestia doesn't want Tevet to know about. We have words from the Hydro Archon saying that only laws and the tribunal can judge her and anyone else. With laws, I assume as the heavenly principles and the tribunal being some sort of system within Fontaine. So if these laws don't include human experimentation or creation of false gods, then what is it? From what I can understand, it's not technology anymore, but information or at least knowledge. Similar to Orobashi finding out about a truth before its own existence. This truth existed before current times, and I think it's the same forbidden knowledge that caused the fall of the Scarlet King's kingdom. I also dare say that it is also what caused Conria's downfall way back 500 years ago. Albeit, Celestia didn't come down to the desert region and throw nails at them, the ultimate fate of their kingdom was the same. Utter and total destruction of a civilization, as well as nearly wiping the memory of that civilization's history. So if this is true, then what happens after we find out about the so-called truths hidden within Tevat? Will Celestia drop nails on Sumeru? Is there certain forbidden knowledge or a truth that will only bring upon Celestia's wrath, specifically? Or will this knowledge need to be altered or used in some manner? Or maybe an entire civilization must know about such knowledge before calamity inevitably comes. This part about the Fatubi is just a follow-up on my previous video regarding what the Fatubi wants to do with all seven of the Gnosis or Gnosis. Now, is this truth of the world related to the Fatui's plan to create the fake Skaramush god? Or is Skaramush's fake god really just a prototype for something bigger? And if so, well, how big? From what I can understand, this truth of the world I assume is knowledge or information about what really happened prior to the Archon War, or specifically the Old World. We know that Piero made some oopsies way back in the previous Era Kingdom and wants to return the current Tevat back to what it once was which I assume was when Conria wasn't under the world. We know that Conria is somewhat underneath Tevat somewhere, but wherever it is right now, I want to think that it wasn't supposed to be there in the first place. The book Before the Sun and Moon from Enconomia, if you can still remember, mentions the heavens capsizing and the earth being rent asunder, and that their civilization fell beneath the world. Along with that, Enconomians were not allowed to leave the underground, saying that the primordial one, Phanes, laid down a ban, followed by the seeming assumption that the primordial one beat the second one without the Enconomians having a first-hand knowledge 
of seeing who actually beat the other as well as who really placed down the ban. The shade known as Eboshi also mentions people who existed before the Second Heavenly War should not be remembered, as well as multiple instances of context within Enkanamiya wanting to be erased before the Enkanamians went to the surface. This, I think, is the forbidden knowledge or truth that is hiding underneath Teyvat's bright and colorful exterior. Celestia doesn't want knowledge of what happened in the Second War to come up to the surface, and upon the agreement between the Orobashi to spare the people of Enkanamiya from perishing as well as forbidding, mentioning, or bringing with them such knowledge to the outside world once they become the people of Watatsumi today. This is the truth that Teyvat should not know about. At least that's what I think. Now if this is true and the Second War has information that Celestia is keeping away from Teyvat, then what information or what happened between the Primordial One and the Second One? Is it so important and, dare I say, changes everything so much that destroying an entire civilization or killing even gods is considered an option just to keep it a secret? But of course, we'll find out about it in the next patch. So for now, this will be a little theory that just popped into my head and I just wanted to talk about real quick. And there you go, a little theory about what I think may or may not happen as well as some premonition that truths of Teyvat shouldn't be taken lightly lest judgment be passed upon those who dare to tread beyond the unknown. So what do you think the truths of Teyvat really are? And what do you think is gonna happen with Azar, Alhaytham, Nilo, Nahida, and the Traveler in the end? Comment below if you have any questions or talk about your own opinion on what you'd like to say regarding the 3.2 trailer or regarding my video. But yeah, I hope you you guys enjoyed this video. Once we find out about Scaramouche and how the story ends when 3.2 drops, I'll be sure to go back on these three topics as well as make an in-depth video about, well, no one understands Scaramouche and one about the old world. With how things have been going with the desert region and the stories from the other old world areas, I can surely say that Conria chapter, whenever it would be three years from now, it's gonna be crazy and we'll just be at odd how it ends as well. But if if you enjoyed this video make sure you leave a like and if you want to see more of my content do subscribe and click on that bell to stay updated whenever I have a new video or whenever I feel like streaming. If you want to support your boy go give my twitter a follow. I barely post there but eventually and evidently I need to get more into that side of social media too. But yeah follow my twitter if you so please. And with that said thanks for watching I'll see you guys in the next video yeah. Like comment if you enjoyed subscribe for more of my ramblings and stay mad theory. Bye!